GitHub.com slash Copilot really is what we imagine GitHub to be in an AI native world. This is really going to be very powerful. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so I'm super excited to dig in today because we all know we've been using our favorite coding assistant, GitHub Copilot, on our favorite ID, VS Code. But it turns out there is this whole other life that is living on GitHub.com that maybe we haven't used as much. So I'd love for you to take us through how are you using GitHub Copilot on GitHub.com directly and maybe why some people should actually look into taking advantage of its utility there. GitHub.com slash Copilot really is an immersive experience for Copilot within the GitHub website. And there are a ton of capabilities already in here. So you can chat with Copilot. You can ask things about files within your repositories or issues or pull requests. You can actually also create issues and pull requests. And let me actually show that to you here right now. So I, I had a problem earlier where there is a little issue in the screenshot um, where you can see here that there is an arrow that points uh, up right, but it overlaps this other icon here. So I might want to create an issue for that, right? So what I can do is I pull this in as a reference, and then I tell Copilot, please create an issue in the... And now I'm choosing the repository here and describe what the issue is. And then we just kick that off and see. Okay, perfect. So now you've given Copilot your screenshot, basically, of the issue exactly. to create an issue. Exactly. I gave Copilot the screenshot of an issue. And so it now created the issue for me here. You can read the description, obviously, here. And now that's it, right? Like I can go ahead and if I would want to like change the repository, I can change labels, like everything you already know from how you would be treating or working with issues. You can also do that from within Copilot here, just that it is a little bit faster because Copilot knows about the problems. It has some context and you can provide it just a bit more and then it'll be able to, well, kickstart the whole thing for you. And so here you can just go and create the issue now and then it actually does so. You didn't actually tell Copilot what to title the issue, right? It just basically taking a look at the actual screenshot in your description, it created the issue title for you. Yeah, exactly. So I just gave it the hint, right, that there might be an issue in the in the bottom left, or let me just scroll up here, hint that there's an overlapping arrow icon. So yeah, it just takes the information from the image plus the little context I provided, and then it'll create the issue based on the in available information. I could obviously also instruct it to do way more than that. And it also supports to use your issue templates if you have some in your repository. So then it would go after that certain format of the existing templates. Aside from creating issues, you can also, you see on the left, you have just the regular chat where you can just interact with all things GitHub within Copilot. But you also have spaces which you already know. They can navigate to Spark. There is agents available as well. And this is actually a compelling scenario where I could go in here and when I created the issue, this one, then I could actually assign Copilot to this issue if I would want to. So Copilot will go and execute on solving this issue, which is a whole nother dimension of chat and the agentic dimensions that we have uh, at, at GitHub at, at the moment. And you can do all of this right from that one screen. So this is sort of like your control center for all Copilot. Yes, exactly. So github.com slash Copilot really is what we imagine GitHub to be in an AI native world. And so there will be more to come. And then this is really going to be very powerful. It, it can also obviously retrieve you all the information from your account. Like in this instance, if you wanted to list all the issues that are open and assigned to you, then this is what it's doing, right? And because I created the issue earlier, it'll list me the issue that I created now here. So you already have Spark for doing the real big prototypes where it could do whatever you, you could possibly imagine and go and iterate on those prototypes. But sometimes it's also really about the small things, right? Where you would just want to have a quick component or a quick part of a website or something that you actually have somewhere in production. And you need a really quick answer about that. And that's where you can also just instruct Copilot to 
create your little prototype also for example, for learning purposes, right? Like oftentimes, I, I don't know exactly what a certain variable or like what certain things in CSS do or do not do. And so Copilot can actually help me here to figure that out with me in a very interactive way because it can create a brief prototype like this out of the box for me. And then I can well, just play with that, right? Like I can can look at the code here, understand the code. I can actually also go in here and tweak the code, right? Like I can do this, go back, preview it again, and then see what's happening when I when I did those changes. And then on top of that, you can obviously also go in and just share what you did here with, well, anyone. And then you send that to your colleagues, to your friends, and then you can actually start a conversation, talk about it, and further iterate it or discuss a certain problem together. Let's say I send this back to my colleague and they taking a look, giving me some feedback. Can I come back to the same conversation and continue iterating? Yes, exactly. You can go back to the same conversation all the time. You could also just say, let's let's have a look here, right? Like you can just go in here and say, like, can you please make this all pink? Because I like pink. And then it'll just go and do that, right? Like you don't have to necessarily tweak things in here via code. You don't actually need to code. You could just iterate on it via natural language still. And so based on a conversation with your colleagues, you can do that while actually chatting with them. So it's pretty much interactive and also, well, quite fast, right? So you don't actually have to wait any, any time here. What you can also do is um, oftentimes we're working with text. And so Copilot can also help you here to iterate on bigger blocks of text. And there is, for example, also the capabilities that you already know from GitHub within Copilot here. So if we ask it to create any sort of markdown file, it'll just go and create a markdown file. And there is then also support, for example, for mermaid diagrams, where you can render and show a mermaid diagram of whatever complexity it has or for whatever use case it is. You can use all the capabilities that already exist on GitHub within chat. Like we made sure that we attach all the existing flavors and the persona or the culture of GitHub with Copilot here as well. One of the powerful capabilities of chat is really that you have the choice of all the models. And so whenever you're running into a situation where you think like whatever model you are usually using or the default one, GPT 4.1, isn't the right one for the job because, well, it's maybe just giving you a mediocre answer or so. Well, there is always more, right? So you could choose, I don't know, Claude's on a 3.7 thinking or even Opus 4, which is the, the biggest model available at the moment. And then so you can go and ask it the same questions you would ask also any other model. And there will be a difference in how the models interpret the data that they get from their tool calls. And it's up to you to decide which of them provides you the best answers to your questions. But it also leaves you with the ability to get the information or the different information. And especially when you're stuck sometimes on something and you know, oh, it's actually my prompt is pretty good. And it must be that the model, I don't know, maybe it has wrong context on something, but also maybe it's just mixing things up or the history of it is a problem. So you could just go in here and reload the same response, but with a different model. So we can also do the same, but with a very fast one, which is O3 mini here. I can see the difference in the response, right? Like from yes. the two models, very cool. Now, if we would continue the conversation and say, let's look closer into action menu. What exactly does it do? We are continuing the conversation here and going down the path with the Opus 4 model, but actually this response here was from O3 mini. So we can also mix different models throughout the conversation. And then there is also the power of threads, which means that I can also switch to the th thread that I kicked off in the first place, right? So I can go back here, which is the initial one, and I can go back to the second one, which is the one where I started with O3 mini and then came back to Opus 4. So there is really these capabilities of threading, which I usually refer to as the multiverse, because that that's what it is, right? Like one universe doesn't have context about the other one. so 
the responses and the context isn't polluted by the other universes. And that way you get just the best responses within the universe you are currently in. And you can also always fork off from that universe and just go into a different realm again and again and again. And that makes it really powerful because then you don't have to continue a conversation with the bad context, but you can continue with the good context, potentially giving you a much more powerful results and in the end also a solution to the problem. The difference here is really between IDE and the web is that in the IDE, you obviously have much more context awareness because you have a repository open. Then you also there have the powerful ag agentic mode or agent mode, and you can iterate on the current code base. But that is usually where the focus is, right? Like the project and the current code base you're working on. Whereas in .com chat, it's a little bit more open-ended and it has much more context available from the GitHub platform. And obviously also every entity that you know exists on GitHub, like issues, pull requests, discussions, it's just a click away. So it's just that within .com chat, you are essentially within GitHub, whereas in the IDE, you're just continuing to be in the IDE. So there are two different situations here, and it's up to you, the user, to choose which one to use uh, at a certain time, right? Like it depends on where you're working at the moment. What do you think is the advantage of developers using this AI native experience right here on GitHub? It's really the integration with the existing platform, which we are heavily continuing to push in the future. And there is much more to come that will connect the pieces between AI and GitHub here. So what we have here right now, what works today is probably the latest version. And from now on, it'll just go deeper, meaning that it'll become more capable, more powerful. While we're right now just touching on, oh, you create an issue, recreate a pro request, it'll go much deeper in the sense that you'll be able to much more quickly iterate on something, whether it's an issue, a pull request, or a code. You could just basically orchestrate everything you have on GitHub, but with natural language in a chat here. So the capabilities are almost endless at the moment, and that's what we're working on. Well, Daniel, I've learned a lot today. Uh, definitely need to come and experience GitHub Copilot in that con more. And make it more a part of my workflow. And I know the team is cooking up some really interesting and exciting things. So you'll have to come back and show us later on. I will. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Daniel. If this was helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe to GitHub's YouTube channel for more feature updates and dev tips. Push these changes to main and we'll catch you in the next release.